Hello and welcome back to the advanced course on Tableau. In the previous tutorial, we calculated the sales per capita and we've pretty much already completed this analysis. So we looked at this chart and we were able to derive that from two standpoints. Victoria is the better state to consider for the expansion. And all in all, our analysis is ready to go and ready to be presented. But today we will do one quick thing. Today is a quick tutorial to introduce one um, more tool that is available for you in uh, Tableau and that will help us make this analysis uh, a bit prettier in a sense uh, for um, when we're presenting so that it's it's a bit more insightful. So just add that finishing touch to our analysis. So if we go into analytics over here, the tool we're going to be talking about is called the forecast over here. And in order to apply the forecast, what we're going to do is we're going to take a forecast and we're going to drag it onto the chart. Um, and there we go. What you can see is on the right, some new bars have appeared and they are actually for future dates. So for dates not present in our data set, so there's May 2016, August 2016, December 2016. So as you can see, it's these dates haven't even occurred yet, but Tableau can already predict or hence the word forecast um, what the probable sales are going to be or the sales per capita in this case are going to be in those months for each of these states. And how does that work? How does Tableau predict? Well, um, Tableau is looking at two things. It's looking at the trend over here, which is um, we've already got highlighted or outlined with this trend line. And it's also looking at seasonality. So this is a great example um, where seasonality is playing a huge role. So as we discussed, uh, the peaks are in December when people are buying uh, lots for Christmas and New Year's. And the troughs are uh, in February when people are paying off their credit cards. So Tableau is able to look at this information or look at these graphs and pick out these season seasonal effects and apply them to the forecast. So not only is the trend um, intact, so it's, it's taking the trend into account to see in which direction the sales per capita are going to go. But also, um, you can see that here in December, there's a peak, here in December, there's a peak, and the trough falls into February. So the seasonal effects are also taken into account. And in order to control this forecast, all you have to do is right-click and go to forecast. You see this arrow over here? You can see the arrow over here as well, and you can see the arrow over here. By the way, this um, color has been added automatically so that the forecast is a bit... Uh, more pale than the main chart. So if we go into forecast, uh, if you want to take the forecast off, you just uncheck show forecast. Um, let's go into forecast options. So here you've got some controls that give you some flexibility around what you want to see with the forecast. Um, so automatic, it's uh, telling, uh, so this is the forecast length, it's set to automatic now. Tableau um, picks an automatic range where how long, how far ahead it wants to forecast. You can change that. If you want to forecast exactly a certain uh, period of time, so one year, in this case 12 months, then uh, you just say exactly, or you can say two years, or if you go up, it goes in different increments. So it can be three. If you want, you can specify two, you can specify 22 if you like. So Tableau will forecast it for you. And as you can see, the further you go, the greater this shaded area becomes. Well, that shaded area is actually the prediction interval, which you can see over here. So if I uncheck that, it'll, it'll go away, right? So there's no prediction interval. And what it's telling us is that based on the information that Tableau has gathered from the existing data source or existing data set, um, there is a 95% chance that all of, um, so if there is some discrepancy, so if the value is not exactly what it is forecasted to be, then there's a 95% chance that the value will still be within the shaded area. And naturally, the further you go away from uh, today's date, the harder it is to forecast, so the shaded area expands. And for instance, you can see here that the shaded area expands greater, uh, so that means there is a less certainty where exactly um, the estimate, oh, the the value, the actual value will fall, but Tableau is predicting a 95% chance that it will fall within the shaded area, which is which is pretty um, pretty good. Now, we can change this prediction interval if we want a, um, so if let's, let's say for example, if we say 90%, right? So if uh, we want a 90% confidence, instead of a 95% confidence, 
what's a 90% confidence? This will reduce our shaded interval, right? Or if we want a 99% confidence, so we want to know with a lot of certainty uh, where we can expect the value, the actual value to fall, we set 99. And as you can see, the shaded area increases a lot. So, but now there's a higher chance because the area is greater. Now there's a higher chance that the values will actually fall within that shaded area. So that's how the prediction interval works. You can switch it off if you don't um, like to see it. Um, the difference between these two is that this is 22 years exactly. And this is until one year, meaning um, it kind of like finishes off this year. So as you can see, there's not 12 months here. It just goes all the way to December. Or if you say uh, three years in this case, it'll it'll take you to the 3rd December. So it, um, it's, it's a convenient way of finalizing periods uh, instead of going exactly 12 months, going the remaining 12 uh, the remaining months to the end of the year plus a certain number of years. You can also change this to uh, a different measure here if you like. Um, what else? So aggregate buy. So this is, you can use this um, control if you want to change the level of ag aggregation. Um, in this case, we're, our visualization is aggregated to months and uh, obviously Tableau has picked the automatic aggregation as months as well. Um, if in your data, for instance, you have uh, daily data, but your um, visualization is aggregated to the monthly level, then you can either calculate the forecast at the monthly level like your visualization is, or you can keep the visualization at the monthly level, but tell Tableau to look at the daily data to create the forecast. So sometimes you might be able to achieve more accuracy by doing that, or you might be able to achieve other goals by changing the aggregation. But in our case, um, our data is monthly and we want to keep it monthly for the forecast as well. So we're going to keep that. Ignore lost allows you to um, ignore the last couple of months if you don't want them to participate in your forecast and they're actually taken out of the visualization. So if I take changes to zero, you'll see that a new bar has appeared and that is that last um, month that we had uh, in our data set. And um, in our case, we don't want to ignore any months because we know that any data that we're using is from the ABS or Australian Bureau of Statistics and therefore it's definitely um, final. It's not like it is, it is actually published with a delay uh, uh, with the purpose that we have to wait for the data to be final before you can get it. But sometimes in some cases you might be dealing with data that is not final that, you know, this month, this last month is, hasn't been finished. It hasn't finished yet and the data will change. So you don't want to include it in your forecast. Um, so that's why Tableau defaults to one. Sometimes it might even be a couple of months. So it might be 12 months that are not final. So if they're like a certain, I think I clicked enter. So let me go back in there. So maybe some sort of um, financial statements that haven't been finalized or um, something that is still going to be reviewed and might be changed. You might want to omit a couple of months. So in our case, we don't want to omit anything. So we're going to say zero. That's too many zeros. All right, fill, me, fill in missing values with zeros. Um, makes sense, right? So if there's uh, some missing values in your observations, then I'll just put zeros in there. Um, forecast model. So this is uh, your main control for which model is used by Tableau to um, derive this forecast. So uh, you can say automatic, automatic without seasonality. As you can see, seasonality is gone. And Tableau just looks at the trend, which happens to be the same as the trend that we've um, uh, created over here. So it's just basically just completely ignoring these seasonal effects. And in retail sales, that's, <laughs> that's not a good uh, choice. And finally, you've got custom here, so you can uh, specify your own. So there's two options. You can say uh, your trend can be additive and your season can be multiplicative or uh, both can be additive and so on. Um, if you want to find out more information about the difference between additive and multiplicative, um, just click this button over here and you'll be taken to a page on the Tableau website which will allow you to um, read up about the different types of trends and actually these are quite useful over here if you really want to get into the nitty gritty uh, of how forecasting works in Tableau. Uh, but otherwise, normally automatic should be sufficient to get some um, preliminary or, um, or general overview of 
uh, what the trends and what the forecasts look like. So there we go. That's how you use the forecast uh, options. Uh, we're going to leave the settings as they are now. We're going to click OK. And what that, what this gives us is it gives us some kind of interest, something interesting to talk about during our presentation. So uh, it allows us not only to show the actual data, but say that, all right, so we're, we're saying that um, Victoria is the industry that is uh, most favorable to go and look uh, for an expansion or to create an expansion in. And we, we can actually already, without any, any statistical effort on our behalf, we can predict what the sales per capita, how much people, um, how much per person, uh, people per month are going to be spending uh, on um, our, not our products, are, are in this industry. So we can already uh, add a prediction to our final presentation, which is always a plus. It is always interesting to talk about. It is always uh, something uh, that uh, attracts the attention of the people that you're presenting to. So there we go. That's how you use a forecasting in Tableau. And this um, brings us to the end of today's tutorial. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, happy analyzing.